Well, cooking at home can be a tricky balance, but the key to success in the kitchen could be what's found in your pantry. Yeah, mm -hmm. having those shelves well stocked with some staples could save you a lot of headaches later when you're halfway through a recipe. <laughs> so joining us now with some pantry essentials and her tips to make it go a little more smoothly is local cook Christina McElvey. You might recognize her as well from the Great American Recipe on PBS. Good morning. Hello there. Hello. Welcome Thanks back. Thanks so much for coming in. Absolutely. This is a, this is a great topic to tackle, honestly. Yeah. Pantry having a well-stocked pantry it is an art form it is and you know this is a lot of people are going into their spring cleaning mode mm -hmm. um, I went through it about a week ago when we hit did the time changeover and I was like yep. okay it's spring and then there's just that bug that everyone gets where it's like we're changing over our closets mm -hmm. we're right. going through everything and so clean all the things clean all <laughs> the things which includes a pantry uh-huh so this is actually everything that I kept in my own personal pantry. Yeah, you were so oh, kind wow. to pack up most of your pantry. <laughs> <Dual pantry. laughs> and bring it into the show this morning. This is great. Yeah. Your husband's gonna go looking through the pantry for some food this morning. Right. It's like, where's all the food? food? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, but you know, a lot of people ask me, how do you put everything together without a lot of thought? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm a big believer in what's called intuitive cooking, but intuitive cooking is also based on, you know, your a little bit of science and how things flow together, but then also your personal preferences for tastes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, every kitchen should always have some basics. I try to stay away from pre-processed, you know, packaged foods. So you're not sure. going to find a whole lot of, you know, boxes of Kraft macaroni and cheese. At least for me, like parents, I know you probably have some. I was going to say, that's, so, that's, a that's a staple yeah. in my pantry. But. Exactly. But we can also, we're here, we're going to show you some ways to kind of gussy up okay. those basics. Okay. So, you know, we always talk about, you know, there's that book, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are basically the components of cooking. So we're going to start with salt, you know, right here in the middle. Salt, basic. Always have a salt. Uh -huh. You use that to add flavor. Um, it's always and always start with a little. It's far easier to start with a little salt and add more right. versus mm. removing the salt. You can't take yep. it out once it's in there, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, mm -hmm. you know, salt, and then I always like to have a couple different kinds of salts here. So we've got a smoked salt and mm. a black salt. Ooh. Salts have different flavors too. Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. get like a sugared salt, which is going to be sweeter for desserts, a smoked salt, you know, to add a little extra smoke to barbecued flavors. Right. So there's, you know, your basic start. You start with salt. And then we have fats. Okay. So fats right over here and here. So we've got oils here. We've got, mm. you know, I always cook with cooking um, olive oil. Uh -huh. um, you know, being an Asian household, we also have sesame to add some extra flavor. Nice. You know, again, a truffle oil and then butter or ghee. I'm a big fan of butter and ghee. Mm. Um, just be aware that your different fats have different what are called smoke points. Oh, so right. So you don't want to cook something really hot, like 500 degrees on a grill with olive oil. It's mm -hmm. not going to stand up. It's going to get smoky. It's going to taste real gross. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Um, but, you know, for most households, olive oil is just fine, and you can, you know, stick with that. And then we've got acids, which you add extra flavor, some brightness with vinegars. Always have apple cider. I've usually got two or three different vinegars. Mm -hmm. So we've got apple cider, white wine, red, rice, and then what we're going to call, like, the extras, those extra flavors, seasonings. Mm -hmm. I prefer seasonings versus single spice and herbs okay. because places like, you know, Savory Spice over in Selwood, um, they put it together for you. I don't have to think a lot. I just need to think, what flavor do I want? Mm -hmm. Look in the ingredients and dump it on. Right. And for people that live in smaller apartments, you don't have to have a million jars. You, you can just curate five or six different jars. Right. Some Save of those good all-purpose blends. Yeah. I'm curious, yeah. what, what have you run through quickly here? Oh, We've yeah, got this a, one's, a yep. smoke seasoning. Yep, hickory so that's smoke a seasoning. Red Rocks Hickory Smoke Ooh. Seasoning, which is great for barbecues. It's got uh -huh. paprika, some salt, um, some other things. I can't remember everything. Nice. Um, <laughs> this is my Ooh, favorite. Smoked sugar. Yes, this is a whiskey barrel smoked sugar. Interesting. We call that a finishing sugar. So you don't bake or cook with it. You sprinkle it on afterwards. Yum. Yeah. Okay. And these are things that you can flourish. throw on. I mean, it doesn't have to be just one thing. Of course, you can use this on any kinds of food. So yeah. just keep keeping it versatile, but simple at the same time. Exactly. And you know, like I said, using um, spice blends, it's a real space saver. Uh -huh. And then you can. You can fill up your cabinet with other things. And some good pantry staples. Yes, pantry yeah. staples mm. like carbs always have, um, mm -hmm. I always have a starch prepared. And then, you know, we always like to make sure that we've got extras of proteins. So right. I've got a stocked freezer of meat. 
I'll just pull a, a protein out that night to let it thaw, and then produce. Nice. So, mm -hmm. you know, I purchase my produce weekly, so mm -hmm. to stay with what's in season, mm -hmm. but then also to make sure that I eat it and it doesn't like, I'm not pulling it out like, oh, well there's spinach from three weeks ago. Right. right. So right. yeah. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. The that produce makes sense. rotates fast, but I know I always try to keep uh, some rice, beans, pasta, and then like canned tuna, right? Mm -hmm. That's also always yeah. in my pantry. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've done like a tuna, bean, right. pasta, or rice thing for, yeah. for lunch. Yeah. 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 Just, Bowl. Just, Big Easy to throw yes, together. yes. If yeah. they're all in there, it all work out. Yeah. 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 Some all right. good stuff. Okay, get to spring cleaning. <laughs> Clearing it out. Yes. <laughs> Christina, <laughs> thanks so much. Yeah, of course. And for more tips and kitchen inspo, you can always follow Christina on Instagram. She's at Filipina underscore Fox. You can also check out her blog, filipinafox.blogspot.com. All right.